Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Humans in 5. Here in Cambridge, spring has finally sprung, which means it's that magical time of year where <laughs> seasonal allergies have come to town. Allergies of all sorts, seasonal, animal, peanut, a host of others, impact a large number of people. Today we're going to dig a little deeper into how allergies work and chat about one potential source of our sniffly, itchy woes. Allergies represent a response where the body's immune system attacks foreign substances, resulting in a typical immune response such as a runny nose, hives, itchy eyes, and other unpleasant sensations. The trouble with allergies is that your body ends up attacking substances that aren't even harmful. For example, there's nothing inherently dangerous or threatening about latex or cat dander, and yet many people have difficulty touching or even being near these substances. How does this happen? Allergic reactions involve an antibody called immunoglobulin E, or IgE. The main function of IgE antibodies is to protect the body against parasites. However, these gatekeeper antibodies, which are found mainly in the skin, as well as the digestive and respiratory tracts, may become overly sensitive across our lifespans, and may start to attack any foreign substance, even if it's not a parasite. Some of these substances that get attacked by IgE antibodies, like peanuts and plant pollen, are relatively common. However, your immune system can become sensitized to pretty much anything. There are some things we can do to try and minimize the risk of developing allergies. For example, some studies have shown that early childhood exposure to foreign substances like pet hair and peanuts reduce the risk that a child might develop an allergic sensitivity to these substances when they're older. However, some individuals are more sensitive than others when all else is held equal, and all of the unlikely sources, Neanderthals may be partially to blame for this. Now how do Neanderthals enter this equation? Genetic studies from recent years that have looked at genomes from both anatomically modern Homo sapiens and Neanderthals show that these groups interbred at least 30,000 years ago when they crossed paths in Europe. Interbreeding events in our deep evolutionary past have left their marks on the genomes of a large number of modern humans today. For example, I'm 0.6% Neanderthal. Not too shabby. This admixture event may have left some other traces in our genome too, including genetic elements that may have helped fight off prehistoric infections. Two independent studies, published in the American Journal of Human Genetics, indicate that interbreeding with archaic humans may have influenced DNA segments related to the cell receptors that detect foreign substances in the body. These receptors, called toll-like receptors, identify the substances that the immune system later acts on when responding to diseases. It's likely that these genes were beneficial in protecting past human populations by increasing our sensitivity to infectious diseases and parasites. This sensitivity would help our bodies to detect pathogens faster and buffer against them with a stronger immune response. This heightened sensitivity obtained from Neanderthals and other archaic humans may have helped anatomically modern humans survive as they moved into Europe and adapted to the new diseases and parasites of that continent. But in a modern age where we interact less and less with parasites, this higher sensitivity may have us in sneezing fits every spring or keep us away from other harmless things in our environment. So if there's anything your body says no to, from cats to foods to pollen, you might just have some archaic human relatives to blame. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Humans in 5. See you then.